What is that? Where am I supposed to park my car? Recently, I've been playing a whole lot of golf. In this video, I'm on a mission to create an at-home golf simulator, a fraction of the cost. Now, most golf simulators start a purchase around $5,000 and up. A lot of it has to do with the enclosure that you buy, the projector that you get, and the materials that are being used in it. Well, today, as we go through this build, I'm gonna show you places that you can shave off a little bit of fat. The mission here is to make sure this enclosure is wide and tall enough for us to take a swing, even with a driver, and not clip anything. That being said, the mission is to build it 10 feet wide and eight feet tall. It's huge, it's even bigger. I knew this is the size, but it's definitely bigger once it goes up. The outside doesn't need to be too big. Three and a half, four feet wide should be just enough to keep us inside the enclosure and having balls not flying all over the place. Exhibit A. It's important to realize here that you're gonna be wrapping this thing with material. So you need to have uh, basically planned ahead all the anchor points. Kind of like hanging drywall in the house, to be honest with you. Right? Know where the screws are going. So this right here is the screen, the 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is super important. So there's a few different options you have when it comes to screens. You can get the regular old projector screen. They're fairly inexpensive. The only problem with that, you're probably gonna have to use foam golf balls for your simulator. But we're gonna make this extra. We're gonna use an official impact screen. This is rated for a projector and it's rated for real life golf balls, which the guy said you can smack close to 115 miles an hour. The screen includes these little loops. By using a bungee cord that I bought and I spent seven bucks on this at the local hardware store, we're gonna feed it through, tie it off on top, and secure it to our two by four studs using a washer and a screw. Doing so will allow feedback on the bungee and not ruin our beautiful impact screen. We're gonna be so impactful. So this is part of the episode where we get a little bit uh, better homes and garden on you. We're usually using power tools. Well, today we're using house tools. Even though I'm stretching this canvas here, I, I gotta steam it out or else these little folding creases, they're still gonna stay there. So let's get steaming, boys. Guys, real quick, I wanna talk to you about buying gifts for people like myself. I, I have all the tools that I need and I have all the gadgets that I need. So it's very difficult to buy something special for an anniversary or a birthday or any other kind of celebration for a person like myself. And that's why you can't beat a watch. I love wearing watches. I wear them with everything, whether from work to dressing up or anything like that. Original grain is what you guys need to know about. I work with Wood. They make watches out of unique materials. They've done it for over a decade. This one is a whiskey barrel with an espresso plated stainless steel. It's a perfect thing for somebody like me. And you can get it engraved on the back. It's great for weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, graduations, so many more things. And the great thing about it is you can dress them up, you can dress them down, you can do whatever you want with it. It's a perfect gift for that special someone in your life. And that's what we're gonna do something special for you. Right now they're offering 20% off their Black Friday sale. But if you go to originalgrain.com forward slash Mr. Build It and use my promo code Mr. Build It at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off, making it 30% off the entire watch. And that's the biggest markdown you'll find this holiday season. Take advantage, go to, click my link in the description, use my pro code Mr. Build it, and get that additional discount. Now, let's get back into this video, let's go. So the canvas is on, it's nice and tight. What is that? That's a golf simulator. Where am I supposed to park my car? I'm making it in a way that you could park your car. What, how? Right in between the slots? So yeah, so this is gonna be like a parking garage like for the front of the hood. So you can still park here, you can still come out and it'll be comfortable. It'll make me really happy. If I can park my car in the garage, that's the deal. Is that my steamer? Yeah, uh, I had a wrinkly screen, so I need to. I thought you were making a wedding backdrop or something. We could actually use it as that. So uh, so it, it'll be two things, wedding Why backdrop. Why did I say that? We're making money. This is 
Or I'll rent it out. This is for both of us, I guess. <laughs> Alright, up next is a part that I'm not I'm not terribly excited about. And really it's because I'm terrible, absolutely terrible at wrapping gifts. So uh, this is just gonna be one giant gift wrapping uh, session. The idea here is hang up this tablecloth. Yes, I said tablecloth. You see the official enclosure has this perfectly fitted, perfectly tailored sleeve that has sleeves that you can pull the pipes through. It's perfect. That's why it costs $3,000. In our little DIY approach, we're simply gonna wrap it and staple it and it'll essentially accomplish everything we wanted to all while saving us like three grand, baby. Now we have extra money to buy more tools. Whoop. In order to finish off this enclosure part, we need to start addressing this exposed two by four. Now, I don't want balls ricocheting off, and I saw my buddy Jameson from Rogue Engineer do this on his at-home simulator. What he did is he took some batting and stapled it down along the edge and then wrapped it with excess material around it. I'll be sure to link his video in the description below. He did an awesome job for a simulator that doesn't take as much room as this one does. I never knew this about fabric, but fabric is relatively inexpensive, like certain stuff. Like this was like four bucks a yard. I got six yards. That's pretty dang cheap. I wish lumber was this cheap. That's the best way I can cut that. You need like a track saw for fabric. Our enclosure is done. We've officially saved money. Lumber was a hundred bucks. The cloth itself was about 90 bucks, call it a hundred. And then the impact screen was 140. So what was that 340 bucks that we spent on this setup right here? versus going buying one for like three grand. You could spend anywhere between $3,000 and $1,000-ish on a projector. The two things that you need to be looking for in a projector is number one, high lumen count. When you have light like this in the garage, you need it to be bright enough to display. So they're saying at least 2,000, 2,500-ish uh, lumens, but I would say definitely 3,000, because this is 3,000, it's not the most expensive, and you definitely need that three in there. And the second part, which is probably the most important part, you need it to be a short throw projector. What does that mean is if you have this thing mounted in the back of the room here, which you can get one for like 150 bucks on eBay, you're not gonna be able to see what's up here. The image is gonna be too wide. It's gonna be too distorted. It's gonna be terrible. Not to mention your shadow is gonna be in the way of your simulator. A short throw projector like this is something that gets mounted relatively close, close to like between four feet and go as far as like 20 feet. I'll link this one that I bought. I paid 850 bucks for it on Amazon, brand new. Although I was this close to getting one for 400 bucks on eBay. So well, look around. This might be one of the very few times I actually choose to read the directions and it happens to be on a mount just for a silly projector. So I'm trying to figure out how far I need to get this thing to fill out the entire screen. There's not like a zoom in, zoom out. So I'm gonna make a marking and then set my anchor points. So typically I like to screw this stuff into the trusses or studs, but we don't have that luxury uh, at that location. So they included these little anchors. Last thing I want is to have this $900 projector slam on the ground. You unscrew it up, you're on YouTube. Up next, we need to kill these lights and have a spotlight to keep this area as dark as possible so we have the best image quality on the screen and we can see where they're hitting the ball. So I need to create a completely separate circuit. I'm gonna kill that light, put a spotlight that I can angle straight on my driving pad and then put in a light here. What does that mean we have to do? That means you have to go in the attic. I hate the attic. Oh, this fancy pocket? These are the Ariat work pants, M4 rebar. Literally the only work pants that I wear. I got a 10% off, link in the description. Go check them out. Trust me, you're not gonna regret it. Probably helps if I took the plastic cover off, huh? Dummy. So I Always forget how to install a light switch. Just reference my part online from what I remember. Hot cables there, common goes together, and then ground goes on ground. Shock myself. 
We know there's power now. Moment of truth, let's see how we did. Hey, we got light, baby. Let's turn off the lights here and see how they looks. Hmm, might need a stronger light bulb though. That's more like it. Yeah, it's a lot better. We need a nice shelf so I can put my golf bags underneath. You can put a cocktail or cigar ashtray here. Set some corbels to keep it up. Color, walnut, consistency, gel stain. Why gel? Because it actually becomes less blotchy. And I had it on my shelf. Oh shit. Crap, 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 crap. This rag is so saturated with stain. It's, it makes staining a lot easier, but it's definitely messy, man. That looks really good. I love the stain too. I was a little hesitant. I'm not a huge fan of walnut stain, but this is nice. I think it'd be helpful if I had a battery, <laughs> dummy. Perfect height. Now we got room for the wife and for the kids. The simulator program is gonna run through the program on the iPad, but we're also gonna have a TV for entertainment just cause of a cool hang, have drinks, a cigar, watch the Mr. Bill's YouTube channel, I don't know. And then, so we need to hide the cable. I got these channels that we're gonna put here. We're gonna have out here for the HDMI cable to the iPad. We're gonna have an out here for the power cable for the TV. And then the main HDMI is gonna come from the projector from the top. Ordered a 12 foot long HDMI cable and it's still not long. <laughs> So it's time to mount the, uh, the TV. Uh, this is a 24 inch TV, believe it or not. It's the size of two iPads, really. But it is a free TV that I have laying around and I thought, let's just mount it in there. But I will, I will promise you guys one thing. I will get a bigger TV, Scout's Honor. And I bet you guys have never installed a TV with a mounted bracket already still on it. Because <laughs> this thing is light as a feather. Let's talk about the carpet situation. You got your regular ball, you have your styrofoam ball. This is the one that they use to practice in case you don't have an impact screen. But the next thing you need to know is the bounce from the wall. As it drops down, cool, it's not going anywhere. So we don't even need a rug here. But when you have a regular golf ball and it's traveling 150 miles an hour, it has a tendency to fly back. So you need something here to be soft enough for it to have a dead landing. Now they have large scale mats like this. The problem is they get really expensive. So something six feet by 12 feet or 10 feet is ranging about a thousand dollars. So I didn't want to do that. I just got a single hundred dollar one. That's just for one person. So you can be like I did and get this fake looking turf for a hundred dollars from Lowe's and then get yourself a carpet pad and lay it underneath. And you just spent only $150 instead of a thousand. So to keep everything from moving too much, the pad and then this, I'm gonna try spraying a little bit of what I have, this corner bead spray, which is like a 3M basically adhesive. So it'll give it a little, at least something tacky to grab onto, at least do the perimeter. All right, now let's try this bounce. A lot better, a lot, lot better. Perfect. Ugh. I think it's there. I, one more pad would be great. All right, so the actual setup of a home simulator and all the software, listen up. There's many different options that are out there. This is what the opportunity was presented to me. My wife bought me. This is the Garmin R10. It takes infrared images to capture your club face, your club direction, your approach angle, your backspin, side spin, so many numbers to break it down. Something like this is about 600 bucks altogether. It then connects to your iPad. It has the software to run it on your iPad or your phone. You can play it this way, project it through the projector. You don't need a membership to use this app. They're just, as you can see, they're very cartoony versions of the actual course you're playing. But the advantage by having the Garmin R10 is that within the app, you also have access to E6 Connect. And though E6 Connect is something that has better graphics, it's a little bit more animated, not as much cartoony, there's thousands of real golf courses you could play. Unfortunately, there is a subscription to it. It's a little steep. It ranges whether or not you want to make monthly payments for the year or you want to buy out the entire license and keep it for yourself. I got a lot of things to tidy up and paint right now, so let me get it all done up and I'll show you this big reveal and how everything works in a second. Hey, before I start launching this thing up, I hit about 300 balls over the weekend to make sure nothing fails. And there are six things that I've learned that I need to pass on to you guys. 
Number one is the bounce back on these screens. By adding a two inch mattress topper on the back, at least like a king size, having it hanging straight down flush against the impact screen decreases it by at least 50% of the amount of ball bounce back. Number two, I had the material hanging, I had some batting there, and because we're using real balls, it all fell apart the same day. The solution that I found is by using lawn edging guard, the plastic rubberized stuff, and securing it with screws about every eight inches, does a great job to retaining a nice image picture, like a frame, and at the same time decreasing the amount of ball bounce back when it hits a two by four. As a little added feature, I added flex seal tape, waterproofing sheathing tape, just to keep the balls from puncturing through the plastic. Number three, extra ball bounce back. On the floor, we had to add extra padding. Not only did we have our carpet pad, but we also put out workout mats down below to keep this area as soft as possible because when the balls fall down here, the softer this area is, the less chances they're gonna start rolling out towards. Number four, I changed my bungees. Instead of using really thick stuff and having a tied off knot, it punctures through the metal ring that's around it with all the impact. So instead of getting a smaller, thinner, maybe like a 3 8 inch bungee, but looping it through allows for this to be secured very well. Even if the rings fail, it's still connected to the fabric. Number five is the distances. Make sure you have 16 inches of space behind this impact screen to allow for the recoil of that screen so it's not hitting walls and then launching the balls back at you. And number six, I added curtains here. These are very inexpensive. They're about 40 bucks a piece. I have two of them and allows for when the ball Balls, when they do hit a shank ball, hits, flies out at you because they hit a two by four, it stops it down below. You're not breaking any windshields in your garage, you're not hitting anybody in the face, and you're having a safe experience. Now let's hit some balls. All right, let's talk about the budget breakdown for this golf simulator build. The framing was $54. The fabric was $140. The screen and the bungee cords was $145. The spotlight and all the electrical for it was $60. The carpet pad was $46. The fake turf was $100. The driving mat was $120. The projector and the projector mat was $990. The Garmin Approach R10 is $599, making this grand total build start to finish $2,254. And that's not that bad, considering that for $3,000, these kits online, they don't come with a projector, they don't come with the framing, and they don't come with the golf simulator itself. Well, there you go. I got a golf simulator in the garage, and my wife has her parking spot back. Compromise. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you know where these videos come out. And here's another playlist of videos you might enjoy.